Good morning, class. Good morning. My name is Dr. Katherine Smith. I'll be your moderator for this class session. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Memphis branch was established in 1973. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit as contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the word our son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that's made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true, correct, and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. 
Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Now, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now, this form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consisted of a most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make it up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure, and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary aims or constitution objectives of the Institute, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to escapate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is none other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, slogan, speak the truth. We'll have prayer by Dr. Daphne Thomas. Our scripture lesson is Exodus, the 13th chapter, read by Dr. Rodney Hamilton.
Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Let us all bow our hearts and minds in prayer and supplication to Yahweh. Yahweh, thank you for allowing us to assemble yet one more time. Thank you for putting, just giving us grace and for allowing us to show our gratitude for the honor and the privilege of being under the teaching and the influence of this gospel. You have blessed us so greatly through Yahshua the Messiah. Please quiet our minds, quicken our hearts and our spirits so that we may learn more about your purpose, pattern, and plan of salvation today. Thank you. In all this, we ask in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. Good morning. I'll be reading Exodus the 13th chapter from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name versions of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Exodus 13. <coughs> and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand Yahweh brought you out from this place. There shall, there shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the month Abel, and it shall be when Yahweh br shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore unto the fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this, this service in this month. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahweh. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt tell thy son in that day, saying, This is because of that which Yahweh did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that Yahweh's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath Yahweh brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep the ordinance in its season from year to year. And it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he sware unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee that thou shalt set apart unto Yahweh all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be Yahweh's, and every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck, and all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in, in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand Yahweh brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahweh slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to Yahweh, all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon th thine hand, and from frontless between thine eyes. For thy strength of hand Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt. And it came to pass, when, Fa when Pharaoh had let the people go, that Elohim led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For Elohim said, Lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. 
But Elohim led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up armed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straightly warned, sworn the children of Israel, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and ye, shall, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth, and encamped in Ethel, in the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. I have read the entire 13th chapter of Exodus. Let the Bible say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The floor is now open to anyone who have a testimony or something that they would like to share with the class since being in attendance. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's indeed an honor and privilege to be back in class and to be able to say anything about this great teaching that was given to Dr. Henry C. Kenley in 1931. It says that we are without excuse because I feel like when Yahshua shows me something, I'm obligated to be able to share it, you know, with the right, brethren. Right. Can I get uh, Romans 1, 9, 1, 9, 1 and 19, please? Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, mm -hmm. even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. So to me, this is like a show and tell school. Mm -hmm. Because first he's going to show it to you, you're going to get a mental image of it. And then he's going to tell it to you. So when he tell it to you, you're going to write it or you're going to say it. You're going to speak it. So can I get the scripture that talks about uh, writing the vision? Thank you, Dad. Rebecca, two and one. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what mm -hmm. he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables mm -hmm. that everyone may read it fluently. Mm -hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, <coughs> because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Okay, so he done showed some folks some things. <laughs> <laughs> he showed, uh, okay, we're going to start with Moses. He showed yes. Moses the vision from the beginning to the end. Now, wait, John, and he showed, this John here, okay, he showed John the same vision from the end. He saw the end to the beginning, and Moses looking at the beginning to the end. And then, in 1931, he showed our late founder, Dr. Henry C. Kenley. He showed him an all-encompassing and a panoramic view of this same vision. And then, through Yahshua the Messiah, the Holy Spirit, he's showing us a little something, something. <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to talk about was my cell phone. Now, it's, um, it's different ways that you can lock and unlock that cell phone. Mm -hmm. The first way is by fingerprint. You know, I mean, they hadn't invented it yet. I might be dead and gone before they do, but it might be somewhere you can just put your eye to the phone and lock it and mm -hmm. unlock it. They did. Mm -hmm. yes, like, they good <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then the next thing that you can do is you can put a pin number in there. And the last thing that you can do is draw a pattern. And that's what I did. I draw a pattern on my cell phone. And if I draw the wrong pattern, 
Or if I forget it, it'll say wrong pattern. Oh. You see what I'm saying? So that made me think. <laughs> let me get up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me have uh, Exodus 25. It's talking about this pattern. Mm -hmm. It's talking about pattern. Exodus 25 and 8. And let them make me a sanctuary mm -hmm. that I may dwell among them. Yes. According right. to all that I show thee after uh -huh. the pattern of the tabernacle. Right. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even mm -hmm. so shall ye make it. Yeah, and we, we, we got some instruments in us too, some oil mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you know, I was just saying how beautiful this was and that Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe, Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua, those names go with that tabernacle. That's the right tabernacle. Mm -hmm. right. Lord God Jesus Christ, that's that wrong tabernacle. Yeah. That's the wrong tabernacle. <laughs> but I just want to thank Yahshua for showing me the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Our first speaker with Dr. Olivia Dobbins. Like to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, good morning. that was a nice setup. <laughs> <laughs> um, before coming into this school, and I want to thank you for taking time in your busy day to be with us. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll share some of the things that made us get excited about this. Um, before coming into this school, um, my my family didn't attend church. Now they weren't heathens, you know. My grandfather did. I don't. I, ne I never knew what his issue was, you know, I, because he never spoke on it. He was always supportive. He would take us to church, right. but he wouldn't come in. And then um, I was talking with this minister, and he and I told him I said we stopped going when. I was in, still in elementary school, I guess I had to be maybe sixth grade, we stopped, there was an incident at the church, and we stopped going. So he wanted to know what it was, and I had to go way back in the memory bank and, and, and pull it up. And it was that I wanted to join. And my grandmother, and you know how they, and it was Seventh Day Advent, but they was having an altar call, and I... And I was moved by the music and the preaching and, you know, and anybody come on down and, you know, and I stood up and my grandmother backhanded me like I was in the, First it was a couple of things to sit down, you know, and, you know, and uh, then, you know, causing a ruckus in the, the seat and then having to be taken to the minister after the session is over to have a conversation. And I, I noticed for the other people, young or old, all they had to do was get up and go down there, and they accepted them, and they sat them there in the front, and, you know, told them that they was going to be baptized. But for me, I had to explain why, mm. who, what, where, and when, mm. and wait uh, a period of time and come back, you know, and that, and I, I didn't go back and tell that minister that, but that twisted me up. Why everybody else can just come on down and join, but but for me, I, you know, it's like it's almost like I was four F in the military. It was so wrong with me, I couldn't join. So then we just started listening to World Tomorrow, Armstrong on the radio and stuff. My grandmother never went back to the church. Then my mother had me in um, Catholic school after regular school. We'd go over to the church and we'd be there until they would come and come and get us. So I wasn't an Ethan. I'd been indoctrinated. You know, I, I'd come across a few things. And then finally, uh, in young adulthood, um, as I said, in college, we just started making up our own. So I didn't cover the waterfront. I done read a whole lot of books. I done sat up under a whole lot of people. And in essence, that same kind of situation arose where Yahweh was just showing he had a hedge around me. I think we had a visitor talking about that yeah. hedge around wow. Job, mm -hmm. you know, and that um, I would ask questions and be put out. Just so you know, get this go you ask too many questions, mm -hmm. just sit out and be quiet. 
Then, I, then Yahweh bring me into this teaching, and it's just the opposite. Now, get go back to Romans 1, 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Now, see, the problem was when I asked these questions in these other religions, now you standing up, even if it's a study group, you standing up in front of me and I ask you a couple of questions about what you said, and I didn't ask derogatory, I wanted more information. And because you could, now I know, but, but then I didn't, because you couldn't ask what you got belligerent. <laughs> because we do that too in here, yeah. we get belligerent. <laughs> <laughs> when we can't answer it, and all we got to do is just call to another city, somebody out there, you know, got got to answer. <laughs> For Yahweh hath showed it unto them. So there are some things that can be known about the Creator, but how will we know it? Start that again. Because that which may Because be that, we want to know something. Now, some of us didn't. See, Yahweh's equal opportunity. <laughs> some people weren't studying the Creator. Mm -hmm. Some were diligently seeking. Oh, some, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Smith, I use her a lot. She had the keys to the church. So I know she must have been diligent yeah. if they trusted her to open and shut. Right, right. You know, <laughs> diligent. <laughs> Daphne talks about uh, being made to come and then as a young adult wanting to go. So it's, so it's not about, well, you deserve the truth or the light to shine on you because of your work. <laughs> it's not like that. It's not like that. And um, <laughs> Yahweh, I mean, in, in Memphis, we for, we're fortunate to have a lot of visitors. And one guy said that, um, I'll tell you what, what tripped me out. We did an event for Dr. Harris at Lemoyne Owen. And this young man came down the aisle introduced himself. I didn't know him at all, you know, and because uh, it was a lot of out-of-town people there too. I didn't know him. He said, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so. And of course, you hugged the brother. You wanted to hug. I hugged the brother. And, and he said, I'm here because Dr. Ellsworth from St. Louis can't come. And I said, I will go. So whatever you need, a usher, a cameraman, or just a gopher, go get this, go get that, I, I will do that. You know, I, I thanked him and we put him to work doing something there in, in the event. So afterwards, he told me that, I think he was saying he had seen the Bible class. Just in, 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 and he said, and he was up to no good, passing by, and <laughs> saw the Bible class on his way to no, no, no good, and got arrested, and was in the jail, and you know how then they get, you know, scared and religious oh, and everything yeah. else in the jail, and he said that they just came and got him one day. And I think somewhere he come across some, uh, even, either in the jail or somewhere he came across somebody that told him about Yahweh, you, you need to get yourself straight. <laughs> then he, and then he, he keep on passing by, then he end up in jail. He said they took him out of his cell, took him down to the underground garage where the cars come mm -hmm. out. And he, he said, because uh, he, he was only like in his very, very, like 19 or 20. He said, they're going to kill me. Mm -hmm. They're going to kill me, you know. They ain't, I ain't, they ain't signed no book, you know, that they move, transporting a the prisoner. They're just taking me out, and, and they're going to take me down here and kill me and just take me on out of here. And <laughs> the guy hit the button, and the, the, the garage door started <laughs> opening up, and he said, get on out of here. <laughs> and the guy said, I know they're going to kill He said, he was almost in tears. He said, they're going to kill me now. He said, if I move to that garage door, they're going to shoot me in my back. Uh, pri and, and it wasn't his crime was that bad. But, you know, prisoner, prisoner escape. Right. They're it, it going to kill me. They had to take him to the door and flush him out <laughs> on the sidewalk. And that's why he said, and he flew on back down there to class. <laughs> and when they said, who can go to Memphis? He said, I'll go. Oh, I'll go. Send me, I'll go. You know, so I went through that to say, you can't be too bad. And, and we've had one come through here to told us that he was up for murder yeah. and ended up with, it wasn't no calling back to court. It wasn't no, just the same kind of situation, get out of here. Hmm. He said that he flew on back in the class. <laughs> so you can't be too bad or too good right. 
Yahweh, because then you would earn it. Yes, only. So okay. it's unmerited okay. what mm -hmm. Yahweh is going to show you. So something, something can be known. So we want to go into it this way. Because we were kind of talking about it uh, when we were setting up. Uh, about June 6th, these days mean something, and it's nothing that happens by accident. Mm -hmm. But you can't study upon it. Yahweh has to show it to you. That's the key. And we were talking, I asked, did anybody have anything? Of course, we're in June night now, but did anybody mm -hmm. have anything on June 6th? That, that, that is the day. And the whole world, uh, the whole world, attention was on France and we our president went over there and met with the French president and 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 the people and they was talking about that not now listen the actual eyewitnesses are getting fewer and fewer fewer and fewer those that actually landed or were involved with it and even those that were in the military during World War II are getting fewer and fewer right. you know just let's put that in your so what they want to do is keep that in the memory of those that actually weren't there. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like with this great vision, we yes. didn't sit up under the founder. Mm -hmm. But those that did kept it alive for us. And what do we do? We keep it alive for mm -hmm. the next generation because that's a memorial. Right. That they okay. 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 Well, okay. What, well, what is our memorial? Mm -hmm. Get me Exodus, the third chapter. And it's not no headstone. I, I play for Memorial Day and Veterans Day, and uh, it's all. It almost reminds me of Mars Hills out there at the uh, cemetery. <laughs> Every tombstone has a name on it, but they got a catch-all. They got one there for the unknown. Yeah. Meaning that they weren't able to identify who these soldiers were that gave up their life in the battles, and they're in under. The catcher unknown. Well, that's like uh, Saul and Mr. Mars Hills. He said, "Now nah, you got all these deities you worship, and I'm gonna tell you about the unknown. I'm not, I don't need to tell you about Mars and Jupiter, and Venus, and all. I'm gonna tell you about the unknown because you ignorantly worship the unknown." So, what is the memorial? Now, those are, f are things that are made. They're gonna tell us about the invisible things of Yahweh. So if we have physical memorials, mm -hmm. then what is the spiritual or the true memorial? Okay. Mm -hmm. Exodus 3.13. Okay. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and now I shall this say is, unto this them. This is Moses at the, at the burning bush. Right. Mm -hmm. So where we read in the, in the scripture lesson is them being delivered. They could not, they could not have commando raids out of the land of Egypt. Neither was it like Harriet Tubman. Right. They were all right there in <laughs> captivity. Moses and Aaron came down with a name and with signs and wonders. And that's what we read in 13. He's saying, and he brought you out. Yeah. How did he bring you out? By a strong hand. Now, using that as something natural, it takes a strong hand to bring us out of whatever we were in. Ooh, the the, the, idolat the uh, uh, ideas, the philosophies, the isms that was on us. So, before they have the deliverance, there has to be a coming down. So this is Moses on the backside of Mount Sinai, and it's at this burning bush. He's having a phenomenal encounter with the Creator. And they go back and forth. The creator says that I've come down to deliver. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and then Moab, he's talking to Moses. Read. You want, you want to go back and pick up eight? that part eight? Yeah, I'm coming down. Yeah. Seven. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. Okay, but read, read. And have heard their cry by reason mm -hmm. of their taskmasters. His people. I know. His people. Yeah. That was us. That was that boy in jail. That one and the one down there on the murder mm -hmm. rap in Louisiana. That was us. That's me and you. His people. Okay. And in the fullness of time, he has heard our cry <laughs> by reason of our taskmaster. Mm -hmm. Whatever. The, then we say, Oh, I got a good job. That look. Hey. <laughs> Something's taxing us. Oh, yeah. Something's got us working and we want some relief from it. And the creator says, okay, I'm going to give you some relief. 
Not necessarily that, because we still got to go back to the back the job, mm -hmm. but it's a spiritual relief. Right, right. Read. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, mm -hmm. and to bring them up out of that land. Now, the point is, Yahweh said it, and then when we read in the scripture lesson, he did it. Which all did. And didn't leave it up to them. As Darwin said, it was enough of them that they could have bricked their way up. <laughs> out of the land of Egypt, if you know, I just keep thinking one of them movies. You just each of them just get a brick and just rise up with the brick, cause it was just like in slavery. weren't it more slaves on the plantation than it was. That's why they had to have old master and overseer, and it was still more slaves than the master and the overseer. So it's the same situation in Egypt. That's why the Pharaoh put out the death decree. He said, there's too many of them. They're multiplying. Mm, right. They can come up against us. And then peradventure another army come in. Then they rise up with that army and kill us. Right. So they could have bricked their way up <laughs> out of the land of Egypt. That's what they were doing, brick masons. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh, they was right there still making them bricks and grumbling. <laughs> Read. And I am come down to deliver thee out of the hand of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. That tells you where I'm coming down to. Wherever I'm coming down, there's some Egyptians there. Read. And to bring them up out of that land. I will bring them land. into that land. Mm -hmm. And a large. Yep. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Havites, and the Jebusites. Okay. Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression where would the Egyptian oppress them. Mm -hmm. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly, I will be with That's you. That's how you're going to bring them out. Yeah. It ain't you. I, I, I will, certainly I will be with you. And we've been, uh, the, well, I've been dealing with what the, 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 um, up in Chicago, we had a theme for that conference. It's, a, it's, it's what is necessary for a soul to migrate out of darkness. Well, the bottom line is, certainly I will be with you. Because it wasn't that's what it took them to get out. They couldn't get out on their own. So we want to know how a soul migrates out of darkness. Yahweh has to make a visitation. Right, right, right. Read. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. What's the token? We hate, don't we hate getting tokens? You, so you go to some car wash place, you should put your dollar in, they don't give you quarters, they give you four tokens. That's, that's in place of. In place of. So I'm going to give you, this shall be a token or something that you can present and show that you've had this encounter with me. Read. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Mm, that's a big one. Not if. If they yeah. possibly, if y'all straggle out here, <laughs> wait for everybody. Mm -hmm. When thou hast brought them out, read. When thou hast brought forth, brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. So if we want to know where they went to after they left out, right back to the spot that, of the burning bush. X marks the spot. You're going to come right back here. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of creator we serve. He just said, well, just get out and anywhere y'all find a little water in the wadi. Or the watering hole. Stop there. No, come right here. Read. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them. Okay, now you're saying the anesthesia said, that sounded that sound all well and good. But, but, when I go down and try to get this rescue organized, when I return to the children of Israel, read. The Elohim of your father. No, pick it up again. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? See, we didn't even know that there was any importance in a name. Okay? Now, we know that um, as as we, in the scripture lesson, didn't it say something about taking taking Joseph's bones right. up, right. up out of there with them? Mm -hmm. Joseph had two things. You could have just imagined old Joseph. <coughs> How you doing today, Joseph? <coughs> I died. <laughs> and Elohim was surely visiting. Okay. He, and, then, and, and, and when he visited.
visit, mm -hmm. take my bones right. up mm -hmm. out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's why they bringing them up out. And, it, and it's symbolic, too, about why they couldn't leave him down there. Mm -hmm. So all of this. So now, when he gets down there, they're living among the Egyptians. The Egyptians got plenty of gods. Horus, Isis, I'm just, you, you name it. The, 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 the scarabs and the everything got, got a name. So he said, they're going to ask me, what is his name? Right. What is your name? So name must be important. Mm -hmm. Not just bring them out. What a name. <laughs> Read, what shall I say unto them? What am I going to answer them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya, Asher, Aya. Mm -hmm. And he said, thus shall I say unto the children of Israel. That's a whole lesson in itself. Mm -hmm. Aya, Asher, Aya. Tr translated into English, I will be. What? I will to be. When I would now, most of us, when we was in church, we heard it as I am that I am. Yeah, now, don't you know that they done started backing up and stuff? You can type it in on Google, and some of them will say, I will be what I will to be. I will be that I will to be. I mean, they be, they be just like the Institute, because that's the proper tense of Hebrew. Hebrew doesn't, uh, to conjugate the verb to be. They don't do that. Like, uh, go. Present, going, what is it, present perfect or whatever, yeah. uh, went, <laughs> gone, <laughs> you know, a past, work. present, and future, you know, but, but with be, they don't conjugate be like that, so like it's, um, I am a teacher, am is part of the Conjugation of be. They just say I teach. Okay, okay. 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 Present. Mm -hmm. And then the proper translation of Aya Asha Aya is I will be what I will to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what they now started to put in these different books and you mm -hmm. find it on Google. I will be what I will to be. But see, only in this teaching. Does it make some sense why mm -hmm. he says that the creator can say a whole lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but we got a creator that proves it. Because yeah, later right. on, he said, what's that in your hand, Moses? Mm -hmm. Moses said, that's a rod. Mm -hmm. Throw it on the ground. Now, it had been a rod for 40 years. <laughs> he said, that's all. No doubt. He didn't say, I'm, I found it in the bushes. Mm -hmm. You know, He had it 40 years. Right. And it changed into a serpent mm -hmm. before his eyes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't no garter snake. Because it said Moses turned to flee. <laughs> and he told him to pick it up. What, what do they do? Them snake handlers, don't they go down there and get that thing by the head? Yes, they do. He said, pick it up by the tail. And it turned right back into a rod again. Mm -hmm. I will to be the rod. I will to be the serpent. I will to be the serpent. Mm -hmm. Just touch it. And I transmute right on back into mm -hmm. a rod. Mm -hmm. I, Yahweh, will be mm -hmm. what I will to be. Mm -hmm. Okay? In the mouth of what? Two or more witnesses. Mm -hmm. Put your hand in your bosom. Ain't no doubt. Now, he didn't have this hand 80 years. Ain't no <laughs> doubt. I found a hand at the store. <laughs> 80 years. Put it in his bosom. He take it out. It's leprous. Mm -hmm. Deadly mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. Incurable. <laughs> he said, put it back in your bosom. And when he bring it out, it's whole. It's, whole. Right. it's just like his other flesh. Mm -hmm. I will to be your hand. I was your hand for 80 years. Mm -hmm. right. I will to be the disease. Right. I will to be the cure mm -hmm. or the restorer mm -hmm. or the redeemer. Mm -hmm. I, Yahweh, will Do be. What I will to be. Then Moses, now a little further on, Moses say, Well, that, that, they're pretty, too, pretty good, two good tricks. tricks. Yeah. But, uh, and, and, and Yahweh say, Look, now I got it covered, I got it covered. If they don't believe the first two signs, that's when he said, Take the water out the river, and we start to bring them plagues and put, put that, turn the water to blood. Okay, but we're right here at the burning bush, and he's asking them a name. Read. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses. Well, wait a minute, isn't Elohim a name? We had to come in here. Mm -hmm. Elohim, uh, 
where in the Holy Name Bible, where it's Elohim, in the King James, it says God. We had to come in here and find out that God wasn't a name. Putting a big G in front of it didn't make it a name. Because right. read it, read it using King James. Just, just substitute the proper. And this 14, mm -hmm. and God said unto Moses, uh -huh. I am that I am. One minute, go back up. Go back up. Oh, 13? Yeah. Okay. And Moses said unto God. Wait a minute now. He said unto God, that's God once. That's one God, okay. Mm -hmm. Behold, mm -hmm. when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, the God of your father, Wait, that's, that's twice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? Another tell us and that God, God said unto Moses, that's three times, I mm -hmm. am that I am. It's not a, it's not a name. Right. And he said, when you, when you go into it and you look it up, mm -hmm. and it'll tell you that each of those gods got a name. Right. Even in the Bible, it says that they are Lord's many mm -hmm. and God's many. Mm -hmm. But then in our moderation, it says each Lord must have a name, right. and each God right. must right. have a name right. also. Right. And when you look up Lord, uh, master, owner, bell, master, bell. well, yeah, when you when you go down into the, the, the fine print that we mm -hmm. read over. Mm -hmm. And we used to say, when you go over there to England in Parliament, See, now we without excuse because we got television. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can watch, you can watch the, the <laughs> uh, Tennessee State mm -hmm. uh, Capitol right. on the TV. Mm -hmm. You can watch the, if you got Comcast, you can watch city council meetings. You can watch the county commission. And on one of those channels, you look up and you know... It ain't America, because they be hollering and fussing and stuff. Yeah. And the right honorable gentleman, if he would just allow me to run, run, run. The people in the run, run, run. They stomping they feed the stuff in the gallery. You know, hey, that, that's parliament. Okay. That's parliament. <laughs> and that's, that's really the House of Commons. Mm. <laughs> you don't be climbing. You don't see the other side of it. The House of Lords. Yeah. House of Lords. <laughs> But, but yeah, we do, because when, when they open up, when our, when our uh, Congress goes into recess, and then they what? Then they'll bring about the next Congress, and they'll say this is the, what, the 117th Congress, yes. Yes. and they'll crank it up again. Okay, the same thing with Parliament. They go into recess, but it's a whole ceremony. They got to go get Elizabeth, mm. and here she come in all her robes. And all the lords behind the queen. Mm -hmm. See, when we talk about King James putting Lord in there, because a king is over, over the lords. Lord. That's right. And she come with that white ermine and her, that ball and that, that scepter. <laughs> that scepter. Mm -hmm. And she come and the person go up there and they, mm -hmm. and they open up. Mm -hmm. The queen has to open up the house of lords. Mm -hmm and declare parliament open and then the lords then go and open up the house of commons and they start screaming <laughs> we see that on tv yeah now the whole thing is every one of them people behind her if they just went up there and said would the lord open the door all of them that's in there that's not with her they can all say which lord because each Lord must have a name also. So we have Lord Montbottom, Lord Balfour. Um, when you watch that, see Yahweh make us without excuse, when you watch that thing on Netflix about the crown, and uh, that is Elizabeth, and uh, she married Philip, and Philip took the name, was it Montbottom? That was an uncle or somebody that just kind of took him in mm -hmm. and gave him, put, put his wings over him yeah. and made him enough rank to be able to marry Elizabeth. Right. But when um, he rose in rank, he became, not Philip, but the uncle, mm -hmm. he became a what? A lord. Mm -hmm. Lord so-and-so. He, he had a name. It's Each a lord must it's have a name because lord is not a name. It yes, is sir. a title. Mm -hmm. How come we didn't know that? 
We've got four coming in here. Okay. Now, go back to Exodus 3, where we are. Oh, what, and now look, now when I ask them, God, what is your name? What shall I tell them? Go back to holy name, A A. 3 and 15. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses. Moreover, on top of, I will be what I will to be, right, right. which is bad enough. Right. Read. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel. They're going to be mumbling and grumbling and asking, Is it Isis going to bring it out? Is it Ra that's going to bring it out? See, that's, mm -hmm. that's why the plagues. Because, right. see, they're adopting the deities of their oppressors. Right. And Yahweh showed them, I'm Yahweh, and there is, is none, none else. else. They worship the Nile River, turn it to blood. They worship the scarab beetles, Yahweh <laughs> dealt with, with that. They worship the uh, aphis, the bull. Oh, yeah. He gave a murrain, I don't know what it is, yeah. murrain. a murrain upon the cattle. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that, that's just like, I guess like blazing saddles when that horse came out there and that guy punched that horse. <laughs> Yahweh just punched aphis right in the face, block up. Yep. Gone. Block them. Frogs. They worship all that stuff. Yeah. Yahweh called them out and said, I'm Yahweh. And there's none else. They is. They is. Sure and they, and, they, and they, the frogs die. <laughs> and they heaped them up and they right. stank. Right. <laughs> Just Ooh. all of this. All of this. Then, then it's like the Egyptians. is Everybody, the Egyptians. Uh, the, not, not Yahweh's made a division. Israel right. just watching what's happening to Egypt. Mm -hmm. They praying the rock. That's the top of their pantheon. When you see those pictures, the sun is there, and the rays of the sun is coming down. That's Ra giving life and blessings unto the earth. Yahweh darkened him for three, put his lights out for three days. So that Israel would know Yahweh is our Elohim. So he proves and backs up when he says, moreover, as if they ask your hair ain't enough. Moreover, shall you say, read, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, Yahweh, the Elohim of your father. Now, is it, is it, wait, who, 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 who is that? Like here say, oh, my nephew. I don't know what was with my nephew. Who that? Who is that? From the time he was little, my, my brother's first child. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Now, at first, I'm living in Cleveland, so ain't no excuse. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I move away. Now you've got an excuse, but mm -hmm. doggone, you old enough to have gone through this enough. <laughs> no. Yeah, but when he was little, who is that? My brother would say, that's my sister. No, Barbara, your sister. Well, and he talking to her, well, can't I, can't, can't I have more than one sister? No, Barbara, your sister. He said, that's my sister, too. Mm -hmm. No, that's the girl. <laughs> I was that for years. You know, so they're going to be talking about, well, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I sent, I sent him something recently, and I said, love and peace from the girl. And his wife was saying, who the heck is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then he had to go back and say, oh, that's, that's what I called her. Just refusing. Mm -hmm. He refused all up until his, his young adulthood to call, to, to, that I was... My brother's sister. Read. Yahweh, the Elohim of your father. Oh, the point was is that he asked her, who is that? He said, Yahweh. They tell me, that's Olivia. Well, who is that? Well, that's my sister. Well, who is that? So <laughs> Yahweh got to go through the thing. I'm Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers. The Elohim of Abraham. Now, they just going to cut the air. The mm. Elohim of, of what? Of Abraham, of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. Elohim of Abraham had no children, yet Yahweh gave him a promise that I'm gonna bless all nations through thy seed, and he didn't have none. Yeah. <laughs> but he gave him a seed, Isaac, mm -hmm. and that's a whole story. Yes. Okay. Then Isaac had sons. Mm -hmm. Esau and Jacob mm -hmm. and, and knew about the blessing. See, that's, that's them fathers that Yahweh said, I'm the, Abraham, I'm the Elohim of thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and what? And Jacob. And, and, and Jacob, I knew him quite personally because I had to take it to another notch 
with Jacob mm -hmm. that I didn't have to go to <laughs> with Abraham and Isaac. Yes. I had to wrestle. That's all say. I wrestled all night long wondering yeah. what was wrong. And the angel <laughs> wrestled with Jacob all night. And then it's so funny. Then the wrestling like 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 Jacob really got some strength. <laughs> come come to break a day. The angel said, "That's all. Just touch him in the hollow of the thigh. And his whole leg just go out of joint." Yeah, yeah. And they so said that, but still he dragging on him. He won't let go. And he says, "Cause you have striven with El. I'm not gonna tell you my name." But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to change your name to Israel. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for a name. See, old mm -hmm. Jacob couldn't wrestle it out the angel. <laughs> so now it's time for a name. The Elohim of your fathers, read. The Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. No, this is my name until the King James Version of the Bible, the Dewey Bible, the... Living Word Bible, the Paraphrase, the Oxford Edition, the Cambridge Edition, Schofield, the New Jerusalem. No, this is my name for what? Forever. Are we still here? Are we still here? Forever. Yes. We in ever then. Mm -hmm. And this is and my then, then the name is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And when you look it up, when many of us been in here as long as we have, used to be like hen's teeth finding Yahweh. Oh, you, you, you can find it right on the yeah, internet. Okay. Right. Right. You figure, it. daggone, yeah. they went to institute, I mean, it's just all of this right. declaring mm -hmm. the name. Yeah. Yeah. And it was never, then they'll tell, people will tell us, well, they used to tell us, uh, you don't know how to pronounce it, that name was lost. That name was never lost. Now, what had been, what had happened was, we had been hoodwinked, mm -hmm. we had been bamboozled, you know, I'm taking from Malcolm X now, <laughs> you know, we, this is what had been, we had been shimmied. You know, all this stuff had been done to us because we had all heard of Masons and Shriners mm -hmm. and Eastern Star. Yes. When you rise through the ranks and you go into the upper ranks, they give you secret mm -hmm. esoteric knowledge. So when me and my brother were, were in there talking about Yahweh, and, I mean, just batting it around. My my stepfather said he walked up on us. He said y'all was just batting it like like y'all was playing a uh, ping pong or something. And Yahweh said it, but Yahweh, but Yahweh, but he said I didn't learn that until I got my thirty three degree. They told me that that was the true name. So he ain't been lost. The rabbi. When he goes in on the Day of Atonement in the synagogue, and we got synagogues all over, mm -hmm. so a Day of Atonement, wherever it is in the world, a rabbi is going to go in there, he's got to present himself in total submission unto Yahweh for himself, mm -hmm. the people, and he's got to declare that name of Yahweh. It ain't never been lost. <laughs> when they go to rabbinical school, what's rabbinical school? Rabbi. Learn how to be a rabbi. Yeah. You know the name. Now, do the people in the audience know? They call it El Shaddai right. or Adonai, yeah. but it's never been lost. Now, Yahweh said, This is my name forever. Mm -hmm. Read. And this is my memorial. Unto all generations. Now we went through about uh, eternal life is to know. Mm -hmm. uh, destruction is to know not. It says Yahweh and Yahshua and his angels going to take flame and fire on mm -hmm. those that know not. So that's mm -hmm. this pass or fail. Know not or know. Mm -hmm. Now, is it Yahweh or is it something else? Now, if it's his. Now you're talking about a dominant gene. A dominant gene, not a recessive gene, a dominant gene. We see that in families. We'll say, mm, mm, mm. I told my niece, mm, 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 because she looked like I spit her out. I said, you better watch your weight when you get into your 30s. You know, just look at me, look at your auntie, don't look at my mother. Look at, look at me, look at my aunt, because we're the ones that have that stronger characteristic. You're going to have a butt. And you're going to be big, so you better watch it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a characteristic. That's right. You know, the, uh, the same way with my brother, the, uh, we, we was telling him, your father, because of his drinking, 
got diabetes and had bad diabetes and ended up with both legs coming off. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a predisposition. That means it'll be easy for you to just, just have it and just cycle right on through it. And they take it toes now. We tell them, well, pretty soon you'll be like that. See, as genetics. Yeah. Predisposition to alcohol, predisposition to drugs, you know. So Yahweh got a dominant gene. What is his dominant gene? He's made the heavens and all things therein. His genes are everywhere. Did you hear the little birdie singing mm -hmm. when, we, when we first was here and got quiet now? Mm -hmm. But how do they fly? Yah. I love the, I could draw, but I love the whales. Mm -hmm. Yes. They'll talk about what's the difference in a shark and a shark and a, and a whale. Well, one, the shark got them old dead eyes. Even the man said that in, in Jaws, old dead yeah. lifeless eyes. Man, that, that, <laughs> that, that dolphin's eye is watching. It's, it's moving and it's watching you. Yes. Making educated determinations about you. <laughs> right. But his tail is horizontal. So it don't matter if it's this way or that way still, Yahweh, 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 or Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. And the, uh, what's amazing is the, the humpbacks, they sing. They'll, they'll come up and you can see them, the tail come up a little bit and they go down and pretty soon they'll come back up somewhere else. They'll blow that, all that water out, they'll go back. But doggone, when that tail come all the way up out the water and that thing is standing straight up, that means that that whale is straight like this. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he bring that tail up, mm -hmm. he going to the bottom. Yeah. That, that tail, yeah, is taking him all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that humpback will stay there 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's a six, a six, and a six. That's showing that Yahweh, when he manifested in Adam, he took on flesh that brought him on down. Come on down out the garden and he's hidden in flesh until the resurrection is him coming back up. Six, six, six. Because he's going to be cut. Now, that's talking about the flesh now. Right, right. It's going to be cut off yeah. at this age because it says flesh and blood cannot. cannot. Inherit. Our parents say you cannot go to that dance. Don't be, don't be tuning up and eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put some on you. Yeah. Put some on you. Yeah, give you something to cry about. Yeah, you something to cry about. All of these things. We see the wise, the blade of grass, Ooh, when the yes. when the seed. We go into that high says, I don't know if you resurrected or not. Well, look at that. He's called a what? The seed of Abraham. of Abraham. You put that seed in the ground. It's what? Buried. buried. Was not yeah. he buried? Mm -hmm. And we don't want. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, see, we are not looking for that up on top of the ground. <laughs> no, we are not. We are looking for something that is hid within and goes through a transformation. And it comes up. And it's got a little knot on it. Yeah. Yes, yes, I said yes. we was down at the Curtis Webb's house. I know them people, cut, it was a barbecue. I know them people thought, mm, I, I, you know. Oh, we told y'all about Curtis and, them and his his Bible. People look at him. Look at you. Thought we was watching TV. We sitting in there looking at a box of uh, seedlings. You know, uh -huh. just look at this. Look, look at that one. Look at that one. Cause when it came up and it unfurled from that knot, mm -hmm. it made a wire. Mm -hmm. They do that. Mm -hmm. The seedlings. Then you look at you, mm -hmm. and you got. Eyebrow. 
And that's the way the original Y looked mm -hmm. before the they stiffened his arms. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. And then the nose. Because there's a when you look at it, there's a bone there. Mm -hmm. And right. an opening. Yes, right. it is. And then we got them lines. Mm -hmm. oh, HD. Wow. <laughs> Why AH? You know, when they Psalm, get deep, deep in there. <laughs> they, get, they get deep in there. And the Psalm said, extol him that rideth upon mm -hmm. the winds. Mm -hmm. Something name about Yah. his name, name Yah. Mm -hmm. Y A H. Y A H is the abbreviated form of yeah. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes now we start getting, because I worked on mine this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, you get a second set of lines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is this is your uh, your W, which is yeah. an M turned upside down. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then look look at our nose. Mm -hmm. Don't we have that's that's an E all day long. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, three just like it was like a three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's, that, that yeah, second yeah. set of lines. Yahweh. Yeah, okay, then. I, now I was like this, so I ain't putting on nobody else. Oh, Yahweh yeah, said, I got this because I'm a dominant gene. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm a dominant gene. Get me 150th division of Psalms. <laughs> Because it's a memorial of all generations. Right. So that means you just like you out there in the cemetery. Everywhere you look, <laughs> it's one of them white headstones. Yeah. And you can just imagine on every one of them it says Yahweh. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Haven't we, have we heard this? Daphne, did you do a hallelujah in church? Uh, oh, just say amen. You know, in the culture, we used to say that a lot. Oh, oh man, I've seen them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, even even oh, when, when the choir, the little choir singing was a big choir. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I forget. The, uh, something they did get, they got a ticket to ride and uh, another song. They could have had all to call. The people was up, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying Yahweh, do they realize? It's not, it's spelled J-A-H, but they're pronouncing it Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallowed, hallowed be the name of Yah, the abbreviated form of Yahweh. You say, oh, but my church didn't say that. We just said, this is a coup or something else. I the Yahweh said, I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. Mm -hmm. Read. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise El in his That's sanctuary. what he wants because he says, my name is my memorial. Well, Yahweh, how am I going to serve you? Yahshua says, love. Uh, see, we got a problem. One of them says, uh, love, love one another, you know. <laughs> do unto others, you know, I'm just prayer for do unto yeah. others as you would have them yeah. do unto you. Yeah. Now, Joe Brown, the, the judges used to be there, said that he'd ask those boys, how can you be 13, 14 years old and you sitting in here, you done kill somebody yeah. or attempted murder? And they say, I'm not going to live to see 18. Well, why should he? So see, uh, we we don't want that kind of do unto others as you would have them done unto you. Because they, they said, do whatever you want with me because my life expectancy ain't long no way. So I don't want that kind of love. No, 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 don't do unto me like that. So Yahshua said, new commandment, you love one another as I have loved you. You and me know me. And I've been taking care of you and loving you. Okay. Yes. Three. Praise El in his sanctuary. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him. Where's the, the sanctuary? The vessel went mm -hmm. through about when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel. What? Stand, Stand in, the in the holy place. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm selling discount tickets to Jerusalem so we can go over there and stand on the temple mount so we can lay our hands and put little, put little uh, messages up in the holy mount. No, we come down here and find out that we are made. According, it says, Genesis made in the likeness and image of the Creator. How? Mm -hmm. According to the tabernacle pattern, mm -hmm. okay. we have a sanctuary. The same way the vessel was talking about, because uh, this one was laid out like this. Uh -huh. But the temple looked like a man sitting upright yeah. on the throne. Mm -hmm. 
and it had a dome up there. Like when you see, I took pictures of it, or when you see uh, St. Jude down there, that yeah. golden dome. Oh, now, right. people, in, people in class say, you showing us a Arab picture. No, the Arab, the, 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 this came first. Because Islam didn't come in until some 600 years after the Messiah's death. Right. So right. which came first? Solomon's temple, which was what, 1,000 years uh -huh. before the Savior? Right. There, was a, there was a golden dome right. yeah. or something that was built not too long ago in our generation, the right. dome yeah. over there yeah, yeah. on exactly. the Temple Mount. Yeah. Okay? So this dome, we got a dome. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll tell somebody, oh, chrome dome. Yeah. We're talking about this, this <laughs> and this. Yeah. And then the vessels in your body line up perfectly right. with the tabernacle. Mm. Yahweh said, and let them make me a, a, who? a sanctuary. So your body, it says, what? No, you're not. What? You your didn't know Miss Johnson beat her kids? What? <laughs> you hear them crying at night. So what? Know ye not, not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So within yourself, you are communing with that Creator. Okay. That's the stand okay. in the holy place. Okay. Okay. And as he told them, they out there murmuring and looking at the looking at the Egyptians and 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 this that and John. He say uh, he say stand still mm -hmm. and see the salvation of Yahweh. And that's going into that sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Be still and know that I'm hell. We trying to work it out. Mm -hmm. can't, can't figure it out when we surrender the thing already rolling out already put in motion for us and the next event we still trying to work it out mm -hmm. <laughs> read hallelujah uh -huh. praise El in his sanctuary praise him in the firmament of his power praise him for his mighty act Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise Yahweh. Now, Hallelujah. See, yeah. we would be, because that's the way I thought, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in high school, they would take us around, you know, and we would go to different churches, and we'd be the little brass choir, you know, when they'd have special events, and because this was a special event, the minister would read that, you know, we got to Saul Street, well, that's, that's like the violins or the stringed instruments, okay, right, right, right. okay? Uh, the, the timbrels, uh, the little drums, the tambourines, right, right. the cymbals, the high cymbals. Don't you have a high hat? That, that oh, yeah. that's, that's a little cymbal as compared to them great big marching band cymbals. Mm -hmm. So you got all sizes of cymbals. Mm -hmm. And the bigger they are, the, the lower their pitch, the higher. That's why I say the high sounding mm -hmm. cymbals. Right. So then we say, oh, I go to the church. We don't have no, we don't even have a piano. Well, Yahweh. Got that covered. <laughs> you came up in there alive. Ain't a bunch of dead folks sitting up in there. Mm -hmm. Like something in a horror movie. You walking down the aisle, everybody <laughs> dead, got dust on them. Everybody in there alive. Right. Everything that okay. have breath, breath praise, does, yeah. praise yeah. Yahweh. Mm. And then we say, well, I don't know if it's Yahweh or not. Yahweh says, I got, I got this. <laughs> I got this. Because our mind gets schizo. Well, what about the people in deep, deepest, darkest Africa? You don't even know nobody in deepest, darkest <laughs> Africa. But we want an excuse. We want to escape. Mm. What about them over in the jungles of Malaya? Do they breathe? He said everything that has breath. breath. When you come mm. forth, Yahweh talked about that matrix. When you come forth mm -hmm. from the womb, yes. breath. they are waiting. Used to be our mothers had that had that that good dope. Uh -huh. The baby that baby be sleep. That's why <laughs> you know and they got to wait. They got to rouse the baby because that stuff that gone through the baby. Mm -hmm. Now they want you to have a, a just natural. a spinal mm -hmm. or a natural birth. So there's no sedative. So basically, many times when they come out and that shock of that air, what do they do? They 
They draw a breath in and something else. They just, they just draw a breath in. The doctor say, okay, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Got to breathe it out. So your first is a <gasps> inhale. <laughs> and all through your life until your last is you're breathing. You say, I don't believe it. Run. Run some. Get to get to get to somebody come. Who at the door? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, that's just me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was trying to put my shoe on one day. I think Rodney or somebody was coming. I was trying to know that uh, uh, Felicia was coming. I told my cousin. She said, Why are you out of breath? I said, I'm bending over trying to put my shoe on. Wait. 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 I was trying to get this stuff off the couch. Wait. They used to tell us. Watch some of these shows when they talk about the people with the end. And everywhere you look nowadays, you see somebody talking about, I'm carrying my oxygen with me. Why? They got COPD. See, everywhere you look, it's COPD. Boy, and, they, and they, uh, struggling, uh, struggling with that breathing. Oh, I love the dolphin. They said, Miss Dobbins, please get off the dolphin. They had to give me a big old one. It was big as a shark. I'm just in the water with the dolphin. Miss Dobbins, please. Don't please don't. Don't lay, don't, on, don't lay on the dolphin. <laughs> I'm all down there. And it's like the dolphin knew. See, a whale doesn't have a flap. That's why when they go down and come up, it's water in that tube and they have to blow it out. The dolphin's got a little flap. So I saw the flap open. The dolphin inhaled. He got breath. See, he's a mammal. He closed his flap. You know, I'm rubbing it, rubbing her, and doing everything. I did. what are you doing? And the dolphin would not open. But you know, it, 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 it's strange. You know, oh, Miss Dobbins, Miss Dobbins. I waited until that thing opened that flap, and I'm just right there. And it blew out that, blew out that air in my face. And they said, Well, what? What, uh, it smelled fishy, didn't it? What's the sense in telling them that everything have breath? What's the sense, at that point, what's the sense that they didn't understand? I was witnessing to it yeah. inhaled. Uh, and it's trying to outlast me. <laughs> but it had to what? Let it out. Yahweh, everywhere. I, I look at them old, old movies. See, we, I remember them. I tell them, I remember them when they change from steam engine to diesel. I remember sitting on the railroad tracks and seeing them big black engines. They coming down and, and, and wherever, I don't know where they was going to, but I mean, it would be like eight tracks coming through this, through my, back up behind my neighborhood. You could sit there and watch. Cause back then every, every train just about had their own track, B and O, the yeah. uh, B B S L F, and the, 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 you know. So now we got diesel, so we got an excuse. You go down that Amtrak, you know, but but you but you still pick it up. Um, when that thing starts, all you got to do is watch any of those old British movies, any of them old Western movies, mm -hmm. and they got the train at the station. All aboard! And you hear that chunk, and you see that big old thing chunk. Mm -hmm. Then the other one chunk, chunk, chunk. It's yah, wait, Those anymore. Look, when you 
watch them on TV yeah. or catch them out Damn. in the street. You have to get in the country because they've got to have some speed. It's called Doppler. We hear that on the weather all yeah. the time, yeah. the Doppler effect. That's an echo. Mm. So the train go, woo, wow. Mm. It's a shift mm. in the pitch of it coming and it's going. So that's still Yahweh. <laughs> Yahweh. Skin, you come down. They call it slop. You go this way, you make it a big old S. But you Yahweh. Yahweh. When you get to the bottom, when you were them good skiers, you jump up and you hit down. You hit down with the edge of them skis. And it's say shh. And all you see all that snow and stuff come up. That's the sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Romans 119. You so we'll compass. Okay, I just want to briefly, we were talking about that June 6th. What's, what's important about this day? Dr. Smith was saying it's the birthday of the Savior. This comes out of, because to me, it's still, how be it, this knowledge ain't everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we celebrate Christmas in the world as the birthday of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. All over the world. Okay, see, this is from Google. This is Wikipedia. Okay, Kathleen, would you read that first line? Christmas is an annual festival commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ observed on December 25th. Now all these numbers up in there, they're references. Yes. That you can touch on right. it and it'll take you somewhere and give you some more information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Read. As a religious and cultural celebration among billions of people around the world. We could put a period right there because David used to say, now watch. We read one line, right? Mm -hmm. Billion, and then billions sense. of people around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, we come way on down here. All these different names. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the uh, Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. You know, don't matter. They they celebrated on January seventh. Okay. And then traditional. Then it gets into the nativity. Mm -hmm. We did those that what they used to in when read that. Uh, and, and, and it was a what's that thing that said? And, and, and all the world must be taxed to taxed. Mm -hmm. And Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem, and but we'd read that little thing, mm -hmm. so the whole world knows about the tradition that they were there with shepherds in the field feeding their flock mm -hmm. by night, all of that. But now way down up in here, see most now we done gone bug out after reading all that. See we don't read this part. Read that. Although the month and date of Jesus is birth are unknown. Uh, well, then what was, Donna said, what was all that before that then? Right. Why did you pick December 25th if it's unknown? Right. Okay. Comma. Which means this, now is it going to be an explanation of it? Mm -hmm. Usually we say semicolon. Right. Read. The church in the early 4th century fixed the date as December 25th. So you mean Peter, Paul, and Mary? I mean, um, uh, Mary, John, John. <laughs> Mary, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Mark, and John yeah. didn't fix it as December 25th? No. It was the church. The church. It, it was, it, and the what church? church? What church? The Catholic, the Catholic Church. The Catholic said it as December 25th. Now here comes the why. Read. This corresponds to the date of the solstice on the Roman calendar. Mm -hmm. Most Christians celebrate on December 25th so, in the Great so Gregorian. Now, now we, well, then we, we should say, well, what it, now, if it's, if it's going to go along with the solstice, what's on the solstice? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the winter solstice. Yes. That's looking at the months and the signs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't Saul say mm -hmm. you observe months and My dates and yeah. years mm -hmm. and signs and I'm afraid I'm of you. Afraid of you. Yeah. I'm afraid of you. Because mm -hmm. the Messiah put an end. See the Hebrews, their calendar was a lunar calendar. 
So they had to watch the cycles of the moon right. for their calendars. Mm -hmm. And then just like we, we read, it said that there was a there was a feast of unleavened bread, and then there was seven days. Ain't that counting the calendar? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now Saul says, now you observe days and months and years. I'm afraid I'm of you. Afraid. Why? Because the Messiah brought an end to all of that physical form of right. worship of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And celebrating feast days and holy days. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What does it say? Uh, sacrifices and offers yeah, thou wouldest would not. Right. Well, then what would you then, Yahweh, if sacrifice? He's a body has thou prepared me. that did what? Brought an end mm -hmm. to all that physical form of worship. Right. So the world, we can just simply say right there, the world does not know what is the birthday mm -hmm. of the Savior. But we're looking for the day. Mm -hmm. The day mm -hmm. that he's born. Okay, now how many, it's not, it's not a little orphan Annie, it's, it's one of them, one of them Negro poems, and she, and she, and she shooed the crumbs and stuff away, and blah, 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 anyway, they use D, instead of B. That's why slaves use the D mm -hmm. instead of D. Mm -hmm. When you, um, when, well, they might not do it no more, but when we had to learn all the little songs in elementary school, we sung about the Camp Town Lady. Sing, it was in Blazing Saddles, so oh, yeah, yeah, I know it's The Camp Town Lady sang this song, Do Da, Do Da. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's not the, it's not the Camp Town, it's D, D. Duh, a D, decaptile lady mm -hmm. saying this song. That D is taking the place of the article B. So we're looking for what? The day, right? The day. Mm -hmm. Or D, day. Mm -hmm. Right. I know you said, oh, yeah, that's kind of slick. Okay, okay, okay. They just got through celebrating D-Day. Okay, read what, what that, this is the definition of D-Day. The D simply stands for day. So we're looking for the day. Read. <laughs> the designation was traditionally used for the date of any important military operation or invasion. I'm, I'm come down. Hmm. <laughs> invasion. <laughs> They can't, and, and uh, those French people and those those people in Europe, when they when they are, are there, they are very sincere. The, they say that they they cannot repay the debt right. of the that. Allied forces Absolutely. for liberating right. uh, that's what they were saying. France, mm -hmm. and when they busted that Nazi hole on France, that began to push them back. Yes. They said that was the turning point. Mm -hmm. Time shifted when they invaded. Mm -hmm. So with Yahshua the Messiah, what does he come? Where the spirit of Yahweh is, there is liberty. liberty. Mm -hmm. So that day, the soldiers day. brought liberty, mm -hmm. but our Savior came in mm -hmm. to bring you the true liberty. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we know it's got to be in his resurrection. Okay. Right. But we got to get him in first to get him resurrected. <laughs> okay, read. According to the National World War II Museum, thus the day before June 6, 1944, was known as day one, and the days after were day... No, it's day minus one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Day minus one, and the days after were day plus one, day plus two, day plus, and so on. Okay, so now there's a day called D-Day. Why did they call it D-Day? Because they didn't have a date for it. They didn't have a date for it, but they knew it had to come. Okay? They were planning for it. They were doing dry runs. They said that there was, uh, Britain had geared up their military plants and factories to turn out more equipment. The Germans knew 
that something was coming, but they didn't know when. Because mm -hmm. it's hidden under the day. Mm -hmm. And no date had been picked. But they knew that they're not over there gearing up just to be gearing up. Something mm -hmm. militarily mm -hmm. is, is getting ready to happen. <clears throat> okay, now. <coughs> so, what they, what they needed was... This was going to be a threefold operation. But well, why does it have to be threefold? Because Yahweh, our Elohim, is Yahweh of unity. He's the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't know if he is or not. Well, he is a tabernacle, most holy place, holy place, court round about. Well, I don't know about that. Well, you know about this one. Head, chest, yes. <laughs> You know about that. You know about that one. Hand, lower arm, upper arm. You know about that one. Foot, lower leg, upper leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, like the 12 tribes that camped around this tabernacle. You got these tribes around this tabernacle. You know about that one? <laughs> so you got land. Well, you had sea, because they came in by the boats. That's the sea. They had air coverage. And they had some paratroopers. Yeah. So that's your planes. That's the air. Mm -hmm. and, then the and then when they, when they hit, they on then they, they landed on the ground and then, they, then became the fight. Mm -hmm. So it's land, sea, and air. Mm -hmm. And don't we talk about that? That's, that's your three modes of transportation. There ain't no fourth. Um, <laughs> that's it. It's the fourth dimension. No, it's three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> air. Air, 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 land, and sea. Okay, now, I sometimes, you know, I say stuff, because I've, I've read it, but then you've got to prove, prove the things. Okay. Uh, can you read that? Captain James, Captain Group, Captain James Stagg. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, read. Eisenhower. Oh, this is, this is coming from, um, your yeah, daily, daily forecasting. Mm -hmm. Read. Eisenhower was chief meteorologist. Now that's who that's who this person was, Group Captain James Stagg. Medi he was a meteorologist. Well, what difference did it make? Read. And his team of experts regularly rehearsed for D-Day. No, this haphazard. Regular. 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 That 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 you yeah, know, regular. especially among women, are you doctor will ask you, are you regular? Right. <laughs> what does that mean? Your cycle come around just the twenty eight days. Are you we understand regular as personal, regular. You take out a lamb on April the tenth, you hold it over to the fourteenth and you kill it. That's a Passover. Next year you take out the lamb on the tenth, hold it over to the fourteenth and you kill it. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, keep this as a memorial through all your generations. Mm -hmm. Not forever. Your generations. Your talking generation. to the Jews. Right. So we talk about from 1490, BBY, before the birth of the Savior, every April, they was taking out a lamb, mm -hmm. killing it. That was them practicing for the true lamb right. of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So you got to see them doing the same thing with D-Day, rehearsing and rehearsing mm -hmm. and practicing all the steps to make what? Get it right yeah, when he right. come. Mm -hmm. They was right on cue. Mm -hmm. I would say, I wash my hands. And, and they was just, they, they could have no been like Pavarotti, the opera singer. <clears throat> they made me crucify him, crucify him, <laughs> kill him, kill him. Because why? They had to kill the lamb. They've been practicing that one line. Kill a lamb, kill a lamb. <laughs> Read. They were asked to prepare a trial forecasts, which would then be checked for accuracy as each week progressed. Meteorologists used a number of tools to measure temperature, humidity, precipitation, and cloud cover. But collecting and interpreting accurate data was difficult and the weather remained hard to predict. In the days leading up to D-Day, Stagg and his team forecast that weather conditions would worsen, and on 4 June, Eisenhower postponed the invasion by 24 hours. Mm -hmm. The decision to postpone was a difficult one, as any delay made it increasingly difficult 
to keep the operation a secret. See, they, you know, because it's, it's now, yeah. it, it would get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of these things, I'm going to skip over it, though. It said the Germans began to know that it was imminent, but mm -hmm. the weather was so bad, mm -hmm. the fourth. He said one of them big field marshals went home to be with his family. He said, because they can't do nothing. They can't do nothing in this weather. And he left the front. Mm. And they came. <laughs> Read. If the weather did not improve, D-Day would have to be delayed until the tides were again the Allies' favor. Mm -hmm. This would not happen for another two weeks. Mm. But over the course of 4 and 5 June, Stagg predicted a temporary break in the weather. Mm -hmm. Based on this information, Eisenhower ordered that the invasion proceed on <coughs> 6 June. Okay, I, I don't know whether I have it. I have it in one of the clips, but when when um, weather forecasting wasn't a science mm -hmm. at that point, you know, like we we get up in the morning. Uh, it's going to be, I mean, they'd be pinpointing it. It's 10 o'clock. I mean, it never fails. I mean, it fascinates me. You know, 10.05, oh goodness, you know, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I bring my umbrella? The man said it was going uh, to rain. rain. Uh, so here, you know, we, we have all of this. So they, they did not forecast like we forecast. So they had to get uh, weather people who could look at the clouds and they could measure barometer, they had bar barometric pressure, but it was not a science yet. You know, now they can look at all of those things to come up with a, a, a seven and a 14 day prediction. And how in the world can they forecast a hurricane? See, we'd have made it a science of this. They also had to have a geologist. <coughs> well, why did they have to have a geologist? Because that's a person that studies land, rocks. See, okay. they had to pick mm -hmm. the right weather and the right mm -hmm. beach mm -hmm. and the right terrain. Mm -hmm. You've seen those things when they roll up there with them yeah. amphibians and drop it down. See, they couldn't be rolling them up and it's craggy and it's rocks and they got to crawl all over the rocks. So they got to have a geologist and he's got to tell them about uh, the different terrain because terrain or the earth affects the weather. If you look at uh, with those two bluffs we have downtown, now they say they say it's no scientific proof, but I've seen it, and I got enough nerve to talk about the weatherman. When when those storms, especially them tornadoes come across from Arkansas. Arkansas is lower than us. Mm -hmm. When it comes in, it hits that mass of air hits that bluff. Well, it can't go through the bluff. Then, then it's only got to the sides, back, or what? Up. And they lift up over the city of Memphis and start dropping down Bartlett, Germantown, yep, yep, Collierville, yep, Cordova, Tana. So they got to make sure they got the right terrain along with the weather. And see how y'all, they were going to do it on the 4th. Yahweh sent bad weather. 5th, he sent bad weather. But June 6th, he rolled a stone away <laughs> and gave them good weather. Yeah. Yeah. So that that would be the day of the invasion because it's typifying D-Day. That Yahweh himself manifested in the flesh or manifested on the earth plane. Okay, what does that say? The planning team responsible for the invasion of Normandy had to... Normandy. Now, this is a play on words. Nor. Neither. Nor. It's uh, like or. You, would, you, would you like chicken or fish? You know? Now, if I say I have neither chicken nor fish, mm -hmm. you know, of course that's a double negative, right. that means no, no. So, no man day. Yeah. So what was, what was Normandy, Normandy or Normandy. no man day? Mm -hmm. We're looking for a day, but it's no man's day. It's <laughs> Yahweh himself came down, just, just to play on words, because they could have, you know, why, why was that beach name, man, Omaha? Read. 
had to consider the weather. Okay, why does this have to be in threes? They had to consider the weather? The moon. What in the world did the moon have to do with it? As far the away as that tides. thing is. The tides. Mm -hmm. The moon. The moon. And the tides. And okay, then I'll tell you why. Read on. When assigning a date for D-Day, air operations require clear skies and a full moon for good visibility. A full, see, Yahweh gave them shine on. Shine on, <laughs> shine on harvest moon. Boop, boop, like a floodlight. Yahweh gave them, gave them that full moon. That's why they were so pressed to do it. Okay, read on. Naval operations. Naval operations require low winds and calm seas to safely transport troops ashore. Ground troops needed to land at low tide when German beach obstacles were exposed and easier to deal with. Okay. So that's when you see those different X's and things that are on the beach. If it was high tide and they were covered, they wouldn't know them. So low tide, the tide is out. The hidden, you got to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Okay. So I'm going to yield the floor. But Take the, you take the Romans 1, 19 mm. and 20. See, Yahweh got a whole creation. You could say, I don't believe in that Bible. I don't believe in it. But look, he made the whole world watch D-Day and give honor to the salvation, the ally. What did they do? They fought as what? One. Lord. Yahweh, your Elohim, is Yahweh what? A unity. unity. Those words are things. Say good afternoon to the class. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And I thoroughly enjoyed the previous speaker. And I'm thankful to Yahweh that he allowed me to be here today and to give a reasonable testimony. And um, it's Psalms 19 and 1. And keeping in mind that this is a school. So, you know, when you talk about doing the research into these things and uh, looking, looking into these things and presenting the things and see just Yahweh's purpose and how he's uh, showing us, you know, what he's doing, what he did, how he did it, when he did it, and the reason why, you know, and um, that's, that's a good thing because at one time I wasn't looking at none of those things, <laughs> you, you know, you went to school because you had to and, and all of those things, but uh, being brought into this school and we talk about it being the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. So even what you uh, have known, you still got to research it yeah. and, and check it out again. And we, we're not asking you to believe what we say, but we're asking you to investigate these things and check it out for yourself. And that's what it's all about, replays. The heavens declare the glory of El. Now it said the heavens declare the glory of El. Read. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Read. Day unto day utter speech, mm -hmm. and night unto night showeth knowledge. Now he says the heavens declare the glory of El. Now the question would be how? You know, show me something. Mm -hmm. You know, give me something because there it is in the Bible. So you said, well, I'm just reading this. And they said, well, oh, well, David wrote that, you know, and this is this and this and that. But if it's there, then I want some proof. And mm -hmm. the, the first vessel was talking about show and tell. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell me, you show me, then I got some something to go on. I got mm -hmm. some evidence. So when we get up in the morning time, and I was sharing with a, a, a salesman <laughs> last week about this, you know, I said, well, you say that. You know, then tell me, you know, show me something. But I was sharing with him how that every morning when we get up, uh, I don't care what, you hear the weatherman say, sunrise. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't so time. And it's just cloudy and you can't see mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing. But he said a sunrise at doesn't so time. But when it's, uh, you know, when it's not cloudy, and you look out in the, in the eastern horizon, uh, you see over here it's like a curtain. That's what the sky looks like. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing because it's like it has your blue and your purple and your scarlet. And it's just like a curtain hanging up there, you know. But as time, as the sun continues uh, to come on up, 
then it the curtain is dissolved mm -hmm. and there is the sun mm -hmm. so to me that's like an until you know you get up in the morning time and you open your curtain and then you step forth mm -hmm. and I look at how this is a day that you have never seen before and you will never see this day again. It's a new day. It's a new day. An unknown to you. Because, see, the day before, that's in the past. But then when the day comes, that's a you are presented with a new day. Present day, you know. And as the sun go on, you know, to come on up and it goes up to its zenith height. And then when it goes down... If you look in the western horizon, mm -hmm. you will see those veils again. Mm -hmm. And that's what just so amazing to me. I'd be like, did it again? They was in the morning time, but now it's in the evening time. Mm -hmm. And he said, day unto day. So now then as the sun goes on across and you see the veils in the west, and then it's like it gets so deep, deep, deep red. Mm -hmm. yes. It's like it's blood red. It's just be red. And then you can see in the sky the blues and the purples and the scarlets. And then after a while, that sun is like it just tilts on off. You know, mm -hmm. just tip on off from it's dark. <laughs> it's dark. But then in another country it's light. Mm -hmm. But he's showing you I will be what I will to be. I will to be the light to this country. I will to be the darkness to another country. So you're saying, but each one of them, he, he gives them both the same thing. He gives them both. He gives a light and he gives darkness. And that's what I was looking at. He said, day on today. So you're seeing how Yahweh is doing this thing and showing it to you. And that's beautiful to me. You know, I said, well, you can just see in the heavens, you know. So I said, well, okay, that one is one. I said, so he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. How? Tell me something. Talk to me. He's sitting there looking like, well, you can set the table, but that don't mean somebody going to eat. And I'm like, well, what is he saying? <laughs> you know, but I, my whole thing is, is I'm going to tell you. Because that's what have been given unto me. And, you know, it's, it's something to be brought into this school and to actually brought forth some proof to you to show you that, yes, you are made in the image and likeness of your creator. And and uh, Dr. Dobbins was, was going over this pattern to show you in what manner or way that you are made in the image and likeness of your creator. And then showed you, and there is a physical body right there to show you that everything goes according to this pattern. So when you're looking at this and he said, let us make it, well, how are we going to make the man? You know, how are we going to make it? He better have a head cap, a chest cap, and a dominant cap. One, two, three, yet one. Because it said here, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, is one. It didn't say no two or three. And you don't take your and send your head anywhere. The whole body have to rise up and go as one. And when you're walking, you know, you are, your arms, you can try to hold them all you want to. This is how we walk. You know, he's just testifying. And, and, it's, and he is getting, Yahweh getting the glory and the praise whether you want to give it to him or not. You know, and, that, and that's just the way he is when you're walking. It's Yahweh. You can't get around. Even people who call themselves trying to pimp, you instruct they be, you know, and they be thinking, like, <laughs> you know, you see what I'm saying? But it's all is you way, you know, and, and they and they you can't tell them nothing when they're doing that. But they don't even know that what you're talking about is Yahweh, the Creator of the stellar universe. He said, "I'll be what I will." To be. So you got Yah and Way. He's both masculine and feminine within himself. Mm -hmm. So you said, well then, so what? You if you, if it's a woman talking about being dominant, estrogen. Man, androgen. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's got to be that way because he is declaring 
his name in you, to you, and it, it, you know, it is really something because that's what he's doing. And there's nothing that you can do about it. And that's what he wants you to know is to declare his name. Because he said, well, it don't matter what you call it. Oh, really? You're John 17 and 1. If it don't matter what you call him, then in Acts 4 and 10, and I'll be down. I just, you know, I'm thankful for Yahweh allowing me to come to class today and to have a desire in my heart, you know, even to, to want to be here, you know, to learn something about my creator. And that's one of the things uh, the vessel was sharing earlier, Zuka, that just resonated in me. It said to learn, to know, and to understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the what? The, the dispensations and ages. And that's what we're talking about. When you look at these charts up here, you talk about how Yahweh have this thing set from the beginning to the end. All of it is about Yahweh. And that's what that's what it has up here. It's that creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. You know, and everybody want to put a time on everything. But it, and that's a whole, it, it takes time to go into these things that's being taught here. Right. But we don't want you to give up. We want you to come back. Absolutely. We want you to view it again, you know, and look at it and see, you know, these things that Yahweh through his son Yahshua have given unto us. Right. Read, please. John 17 and 1. Read. These words <laughs> spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Read, please. Father, mm -hmm. the hour is come. Now he said, The hour is come. Now, we talk about these charts. This is the elementary chart. And we talk about these being pictorial illustrations, mm -hmm. biblical pictorial illustrations, and some of the events that have been pulled out for us to look at. And Yahweh have it lined up according to this threefold tabernacle pattern. Right. So right. we can learn about our Creator. We can take, take this event and yeah, put it yeah. here on this tabernacle, mm -hmm. and yes, then right. it will show how this event is going to play out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now it says, These words spake Yahshua. This is John, the 17th chapter. Read. Mm -hmm. Father, the hour is come. Read, please. Glorify thy son, uh -huh. that thy son also may glorify thee. Read, please. As thou hast given him power over all. Now flesh. the Father Yahweh have given, the, the Father Yahweh have given the Son power over all flesh, read. That he should give. That the Son should give, read. Eternal life. Now, if you want eternal life, read. To as many. Now, it said to as many. It didn't say to everybody. It said to as many as, as, as what? As thou hast given as him. As the Father have given the Son, read, please. And this is like Now, eternal. he's speaking of himself. He's right. not talking about somebody else. Yeah. He said, and this is. I'm it. I'm, I'm, I'm life eternal. And this is life eternal. Read. That they might know. That, that they might know. Know what? Read. That thou That only. Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah. Whom the Father has sent. This is a unity. This is not a trinity. It's a Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom the Father has sent. That's eternal life to know that. Okay? So now if you want eternal life, then this is what eternal life is. Okay. Acts uh, 4 and 10 through 12. Being known unto you Now Paul. this is the apostle Saul and he said, Saul, Paul, they said, now what? Being known unto you all. Now, to, uh, we don't have time to go a whole lot into it, but if you want to pick it up, you go to Acts, the third chapter, and start over there and bring it forward. Mm -hmm. But we're over here in Acts 4 and 10. Read, please. Being known unto you all uh -huh. and to all the people of Israel. Read, please. That by the name. Now, it's in a name. What's in a name? It's in a name. Read. By the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, by the name Nazareth, of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, read. Whom ye crucified. Now, look. He said, now, you did crucify him. That's the one I'm talking about. You killed him. <laughs> like I said, why did they have to kill him? He was a male of the first year. John pointed him out and said, behold, the Lamb of Yahweh. <laughs> well, if he pointed him out as a lamb and they had to be killed. 
kill a lamb back here, and now they say, oh, that's him, the lamb of Yahweh, right. okay? This pastor lamb back here in the land of Egypt was pointing to this lamb, the one that hit the cross for us, gave up his life, died. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he says, now what? Read. Be it known unto you all, uh -huh. to all the people of Israel, uh -huh. that by the name of by the, the name Messiah of, of Nazareth, Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, whom he crucified, read. whom Yahweh raised from See, the Yahweh dead. See, Yahweh raised him from the dead. We're not talking about a dead body. We're talking about a spirit of Yahshua the Messiah being manifest or made known in you. Read. Right. Even by him uh -huh. does this man stand here before you hold. Read, please. This is the stone uh -huh. which was set at naught of you builders. Read. Which is become the head of the corner. Now listen. Read. Neither. Now look. It said neither is there salvation. Now if you look up the word neither, it said neither, not, nor, no. Neither. Is there salvation? Now, if you want salvation, read please. Neither is there salvation in any other. In any other name, read. For there is none there other is name. There is none other name. Now, if we read out of the, the King James Version of the Bible, it said Jesus. But look, people, if you open your dictionary even, and you go to the alphabets, okay, there is not a J in the Hebrew language to this day. So his name could not have been Jesus when he was out here on the cross. No J, no Jesus. When you say, well, what about Jerusalem? Look it up. It's not no J. It's Jerusalem. Yeah. It's with a Y. Mm -hmm. You say, well, what about John? Well, what about it? His name was Yachem. Okay, yep, yep, yep. you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have been what the previous does say. We've been put, we, we've been bamboozled. Well, we've been lied to. That's the way I look at it. I just done lied to you. Yep. So, what has happened to us being brought into this school is that John 14, 20, 14 and 26 is we got a, a teacher, mm -hmm. and he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And this is the one that we're depending on to teach us all things. Read. Right. John the, 14, 26. But the comforter. But the comforter. This is the one that's going to comfort you. This is the one that's going to teach you. Read. Which is the Holy Spirit. Now the comforter and the Holy Spirit is one and the same. You see the comforter who is the Holy Spirit. See. Read. Whom the Father will send. Now the comforter is going to come in the name of the Father Yahweh. So he better be y'all somebody. Yeah. You see, we, I didn't even know who to be looking for or nothing. But it's set up that all of us, every last one of us sitting in here, we came in our Father's name. Yes. And you cannot deny that. You know, they said, well, my mama wasn't married. She, I was conceived out of wedlock. Then what about it? She still carried her Father's name. Right. So you came in. Her father's name, which made you come in the masculine portion of that name, Yah. Okay, they wasn't running around talking about where well, they gonna have a little Jones when uh, you, you you're not a Jones. Mm -hmm. And before they gave you the rest of your name, mm -hmm. well, baby girl Jones. Mm -hmm. Before they thought of anything mm -hmm. else, well, what you gonna name the baby? I don't know. So they just put a little tag on. Said, baby girl, Jones, until you came up with the other part. Mm -hmm. And if you fill out any important papers, what does it say? Last, Last name, name first. first on all your important papers. That's why everything is the way it is. And just check these things out for yourself because Yahshua the Messiah, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sent in my name, who is Yahshua, he going to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever he has said unto you. And we do know that it is a prescribed way that Yahweh has set up for you to learn about him. He said, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, you know, so you got the law, which is the first five books of your Bible. You got the prophets, which is the next 34 books of your Bible. And he said, now you're searching them scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. 
He said, but they are they which testify me. So if you want to learn about your creator, he's telling you how you can go in that book and learn about him. So when we go back to Moses, he said he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. He started telling you to go back, go back, go back to the old part of the book. He said, take my yoke upon you. Over there in Matthew's 11th chapter, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me. So what are we to be doing Learning yeah. about our Creator. That's why we are here. That's why we've been brought into this school. We didn't come up in here for no social event. <laughs> we didn't come up in here for somebody to approve how we look and all this and other stuff. We came in here, or rather Yahweh brought mm -hmm. us in here to learn about Him. And the first thing that said is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. Now that's for yourself. And with those words, I say, Hallelujah. <laughs> this concludes our class session. We're happy to have our visitor, uh, Sister Shalanda Swindle. Hi. 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 And this is our first class. Oh, let us stand for our doxology. Our doxology is taken from Jude, verse 24, 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. He Yahshua. No man cannot hinder me. Right on. He Yahshua. Right on. No man cannot hinder me. No man cannot hinder me. No 